Hello, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome to another episode of the Terror Talks. Today we are here on episode 37, where we are talking all about Containment Haunted House and giving our 2021 haunt review. So, on Friday, September 24th, Containment Haunted House opened their doors to the first unsuspecting victims for the 2021 haunt season with their main haunt attraction, the Overlords. The rulers of the underworld have turned to the innocent, jack-o'-lantern to carry out their bidding. They are amassing a legion of these symbols of Halloween and preparing to invade the world of the living. The evils within containment have joined forces and are attempting to escape their confinement within the walls of their unhallowed ground. They are waiting your arrival to unknowingly follow you home. They will await the awakening of the orange gourds and help perform the bidding of the overlords. This haunted attraction has been top rated in both 2018 and 2019 and has also been voted in the top three haunted attractions in USA Today's top 10 nationwide vote. This was our first year getting to attend the haunt after only happening upon it by a mere coincidence, and boy were we glad we found this one. Why were we so glad? Did everything impress like we thought it would? Was this really a top-rated haunted attraction? Let's find out as we discuss Containment Haunted House. For this year's haunt review, we have broken down each haunt that we are visiting into six categories. Sets, costumes, makeup, and special effects, technical effects, scares, pacing, and actors. Each category is rated on a scale of one to five screams and then averaged out to give an overall rating. This new system is to ensure that we are not in any way biased and are giving each attraction that we visit the same fair and equal rating that they each deserve. With this new system in mind, let's break down each of our six categories for Containment Haunted House. So let's start off with some initial thoughts about containment. So upon arriving at the haunted attraction, you are greeted by what I describe as a very interesting sight. So you pull into this parking lot and it's very apparent that you are in the right place because there are some lights that kind of look like police lights, the type you would see on top of a police car, and they're red, they're circling around, so it catches your eye from a distance up the road. You can see that, okay, I must be going in the right direction. Then what led me to know I was in the correct place was next I met a guy who said, you ready to get spooked? And honestly, if that's not an indication that you are at a haunted attraction, I really don't know what is. But you are slightly confused upon first arriving because what you notice is there's a sign that says paintball arena. So I'm guessing that by day and in the off season, it is a giant paintball arena of sorts. And during the haunt season, whether it be Halloween and in this case that we'll find out later, their Christmas haunt as well, 
it is a haunted attraction. It becomes containment haunted house. So it's sort of a unique type of experience because everything is done inside these giant shipping containers. And so you're kind of curious when you first arrive there what you are going to experience inside of this haunt. So you notice... Once you get parked, that there are some food trucks out front, uh, places you can buy food and you can buy your tickets to get inside the haunt. And like I said, you can see the large shipping containers that have been stacked up in the background. And there's a big sign or these big lettering that says containment haunted house. And it's so cool. It's this beautiful orange lettering with some like purple backlighting and this green fog sort of, uh, spraying up it like it really is very impressive it's such a breathtaking sight when you're standing there seeing it like it's really really neat but you see this and they've literally created what appears to be a large building out of shipping containers it is very impressive so you really don't know what you're going to be in for because this could be you know as simple as having a backyard haunt sort of experience inside of shipping containers where you just have these sort of semi okay sets but then you could also have this very extreme detail work throughout and you really just can't really tell from the outside there's no way to tell so you are going to be shocked either way and we can safely say that once we found out for ourselves what we were in for we were very very impressed so let's kind of break it down now so for sets we gave them a five out of five screams. So all of the set work in this haunt is super, super impressive. The team has literally used these shipping containers. Like I said, this is the big draw for me is that they did all of this inside of shipping containers and they've used them to create this full haunted house experience, this immersive walkthrough experience. And you can't really tell where the inside is, the outside is, because they blend it all together so nicely and they create these very unique scenes with each one that you enter. And you can tell you've walked into different scenes with each one because they did such a good job with things like the detail and transitioning you between these scenes. So it was very, very well done. They have put so much detail into every little thing. I mean, one of the first scenes you walk into before you're even technically in the house, like it's still technically part of the line, you go through this elaborate sort of forest thing. Like, well, first you walk into this, like, front of a mansion almost, and then the guy in there kind of leads you out a secret passageway into the forest, and you feel like you're in this sort of haunted forest. There's vinery everywhere, there's trees, and then there's characters in there, and this tall tree animatronic kind of figure. Very, very impressive and that's just the beginning of it because as you go through you come into all these other awesome scenes you enter a diner at one point you enter this room that's sort of like uh it's mirrors on all the walls and some lasers and we'll talk about that a little bit later but it's such a neat little set you walk into actual houses and you feel like you're in an attic space and a meat locker and all these different locations like the detail is just so so good and the fact that they have managed to contain it all into these shipping containers is really really cool so i'm guessing that's where they got their you know their name so i mean from the minute you enter this attraction to the last moments you are absolutely fully immersed in an amazing experience and are truly contained inside containment then for the costumes, makeup, and special effects we gave them five out of five screams the costumes and makeup throughout this show were equally amazing to everything else found in the haunt every character had costumes that were unique to what they were their makeup was unique to them everything about them was super unique and every character was different you know there were butchers there were diner employees there was creepy little girls there was a soul trader or a soul peddler you know dead people zombies you name it they had it they were all very distinct and they all had these distinct characters it was very 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 well done like amazing they did an amazing job with each individual person creating these unique people 
And as you went through the haunt, you really, really got to see each of those. It was very, very impressive. And I mean, truthfully, that's all I can say about it was how awesome it was. I was really, really impressed. Crazy. 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 technical effects so they got a five out of five screams because the technical effects in this haunt were amazing and i mean that's literally all i can say about the majority of this house was everything was so 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 well done you know they used animatronics they used lighting they used fog they used lasers they used audio they used literally every trick in the book to create some really really cool experiences and it, it was amazing so with each room, you like with the sets and with the costumes, you never knew what you were going to get next. So you could have gotten a room full of lasers and fog and mirrors, which was one of the rooms I got. And that was such a cool effect because the lasers were sort of coming from two different sides and you couldn't really see past it. So you didn't know what you were in. You didn't know what this room was. And then lo and behold, something comes out at you and it's like oh okay cool then you could have gotten a room of strobe lights where everything was strobing you walk into an ice cave where the temperature actually drops you actually feel a little bit colder in the ice cave uh, there were awesome animatronics you know there were several of them that we saw they had a lot in here and they were using a lot of technical effects throughout this haunt there was this incredible animatronic i talked about this in the set part of it at the very beginning of the house and like i said it was sort of the line in a way but it actually interacted with you its mouth moved its head moved and in real time there was an actor i guess inside of it somewhere on a microphone who would respond to you in real time we carried on an entire conversation right there just waiting to go in the house that just absolutely blew me away i was so just in shock by the fact that haunted houses can actually do this. Like, that is so, so cool to me. So, awesome. Absolutely amazing. The technical effects, 
five out of five screams, you know, I can't say anything more. I mean, they're just so awesome. Three, oh, jeez. Oh, jeez. I'm not jeez. I'm Larry. Okay? Oh, Larry. Much better. Much better. Now. Oh, my God. Oh, my. Oh, Jesus. Oh, God. Oh, 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 Then we have the scares, and we got a five out of five screams on the scares. So throughout this haunt, every scare was great, and we were able to hit every single one, and we jumped each time. And there were so many unique ways in which the scares were manufactured and delivered and created. Some of them were as simple as an actor or actress literally just hiding behind a wall and jumping out and saying a line at you and they just would do it like super super loud to the point where i was like oh crap and it would get you then some scares relied on some special effects and this was one of my favorite scares in the whole haunt and i will always remember this so we're back to that scene with the room where the mirrors were all on the walls and you had the lasers coming from two different directions sort of creating a v and all this fog so you couldn't see anything as you were walking in the room and going deeper and deeper inside of it, you didn't know what was going to come at you. Well, then out of nowhere, two actors just sort of like appeared through the fog, through the lasers, through the smoke, and they scared the absolute shit out of me. They came right at me and scared me to death. I could not believe what I was seeing. It was so well done. It was so perfectly done to get this perfect scare. And, I mean, I just, there's nothing that can be said further about it because it was just that good. And, you know, you had all these other great scares with some technical effects and, you know, uh, animatronics would jump out at you and do different things, uh, puffs of air and such. Like, there was one scare very early on that scared the crap out of me because it was this, like, really loud puff, like, right in my ear. And that almost put me on the ground right there in the first few minutes of the haunt. But they did a really remarkable job, and we hit every single scare. And I just, there's nothing that can even be said about it, because it was awesome. Congratulations, you died out there. I say dying instead of dead, because you still have a chance to go home. But that's only if you listen and listen well. Do not run, jump, push, or shove. I don't want you to eat some horrible bloody things, but I'll have to clean up. Do not use your devices, idols, trinkets, anything of the sort. They won't save you. So just keep them kept away. We have been known to use people's spines as guts. Do not touch us. We absolutely do not want to touch you. We obviously will if we have to. We don't want to. Do not touch anything in our room. If you want to come up to life, you can touch. It's very easy. Now then, do not eat, eat, drink, or smoke. It smells putrid. Take 30 years of a rotting garbage, put it all in one location, and that's what it smells like. It's also disrespectful. And we do not want your garbage to ruin our realm the way it's ruined yours. Do you understand? Yes. I have to make sure because you're just nodding to everything. Yes. 
So now the pacing of the haunt. So for pacing, we got a little nitpicky because we gave them four out of five screams. And there was a reason we gave them this. So bear with us, hear us out. Don't come at us just yet. So the pacing of the haunt itself was great. And so far this season, it has been one of the longest haunts that we have been able to go through. It coming in at about 20 minutes or so, give or take. Probably more give, a little longer than 20 minutes. And we've already been through about 12 haunts this season, and none of the other ones have even come close to 20 minutes. So that's pretty impressive to me that we got through one haunt, and it took about 20 minutes. And we've been to these other attractions where you have, you know, some of them have one haunt, some of them have one or two haunts, and we're getting through them in like nine minutes. So that's saying something that this one haunt was able to live up to a 20-minute show. And I think part of that reason is because you have these different interactive elements throughout the haunt. And whether it's meant to be that way or if it just kind of happened that way is, you know, that remains to be seen. But because of those interactive elements, you spend more time in certain rooms. You get to take more time. The actors are interacting with you. And that's something we're going to talk about when we get to the actors and team portion of the haunt rating. Um... But yeah, these interactive elements allow you to really take time, really take in the scenery, the actors, the costumes, the technical effects, every little thing about it. You're able to spend so much more time in a specific room and not have to basically run out. Some haunted houses, you'll be in a room and an actor is literally like, okay, we're going to scare you and get you out of this room now. And that's no fun. That's no fun for anybody because you want to take in everything, you know. I equate it with a couple haunted houses I've been to. I pay a certain amount of money. I want to get the full experience. So I'm very glad that at this haunt, we were able to get that even with, you know, us being by ourselves. Because, you know, sometimes if you're alone, you won't necessarily get the full experience. You'll be sort of rushed through and you'll end up in another group or another group will catch up to you. And you lose part of the experience. That really didn't happen to us at all. And I think that was awesome. We got a full, unique experience for us. We didn't hear the exact same thing twice. So if we did catch up to another group, um, the actors would find a way to change things up a little bit, maybe play off something that would happen before or something that I would say in response. You know, they'd kind of play with you. It was almost a sort of like a almost an improv scene, only you're not really meaning to improv. They're sort of improving with you. And it was fantastic. The length of this haunt was phenomenal, offered a lot of really cool variety in terms of just what you're going to see, what you're going to experience. The only issue I had, and this is why pacing got four out of five, is because when you enter the front doors of the haunt, you think you're in the haunt. But you actually are technically waiting in another line. Now, what I will say is they're using that room to sort of set up the story for you. But then it leads you to be in another line. And you have to hear all the rules that you've already heard outside the haunt again. So like when you arrive there, you wait in a line outside and a girl gives you this spiel about don't touch the actors and all that fun stuff. You get inside and you think, okay, time to go. Let's go. And then you end up in a line and you get to hear that same spiel again. And unfortunately, because of the way that that part of the line is set up, you will hear the same spiel a million times. Because, and this is something we'll talk about with actors and team, the actress that's in there, great on her for literally committing her lines to memory, but she doesn't change it up at all, or at least she didn't the night I was there. She gave the exact same spiel word for word each time. 
And I, for one, I was just impressed that she was able to do that that many times without her just being like, you know what, I quit. I can't do this anymore. So good on her for that. But because of this, you do wait in line a little bit longer. And, you know, the great thing is, though, containment is also making sure that each group is the group that's going through. You're going through with who you came with. So if I come alone, they're sending me through alone. If I come through with a group of four, they're sending that group of four and nobody else. I don't know if that's how it always is, but on that particular night, which was a Friday night, it was October 1st. I mean, to me, that seems like a pretty good standard operation. I mean, yeah, it makes things take a little bit longer, but it still sort of works out. But if there's a way to to make this sort of line that you're waiting in out there a little bit longer, find a way to maybe give the rules a little quicker or even cut out the whole rule spiel a second time. Because if you're hearing it once, you don't necessarily need to hear it again. Or maybe have that first room that you go into where they kind of set up the story, make that sort of tell the rule spiel. That way you're not having to waste any more time and even that would allow you to open up like another room of scares even that would allow you to extend the haunt a little bit more so if there's a way to speed that up and maybe incorporate the rule thing into another portion of the house to where it doesn't hold up the line more that might be something to look into and give it a shot other than that pacing was great the length was great we got through in a really decent amount of time great job four out of five for pacing I see. Uh, what are your names? <laughs> what, you don't want to tell me? What are you trying to hide? What do you think you're gonna, you, you think by telling me you're gonna take your soul or something? Uh, so, uh, you guys been dating long? You guys been dating long? So, uh, can you do me a favor? What's up? It's gonna be a little weird, alright? So be prepared. How can I go this? Don't, don't give it away, Babushka. <laughs> Start making out. <laughs> Come on now, don't be shy. You know, we got Jeremy here. You, you guys are going to die. Why in the hell would you ever do what something in a haunted house tells you to do? Uh, well, no. Never trust us. Ever. We're out to get you. We tell you to do something, it's in our own interest. I mean, hell, this whole forest is just an extension of me. I could just, you know, use one of these lines and just tie you guys together the power you hold. Oh, we all get distracted with each other. Oh man, he told us a big out. <laughs> well, you know what? You get a piece of candy. How about that? But no, no, when you get to the end, moron. <laughs> The hell you think I am, candy man? Say it five more times. <laughs> no, thank you. Easy and scary to me. He's a bit much to handle, let me tell you. <laughs> well, you. Candy man, don't give me a hand. I'll pull up No, thank you. I got a hook for a hand. It looks like it's not been cleaned in a century. Looks like you'd give me syphilis just by touching you with it. There's four people coming in. Four people for my shenanigans. All right. Hey, what's up? Now, finally, we were at the actors and the team, and they also received five out of five screams. So the actors and team behind this attraction, you can tell, are second to none. And we have been to several haunted houses across Georgia, South Carolina, and have encountered some truly amazing teams behind each of these haunts. And containment has earned their rightful spot next to them. Every actor inside of this haunt is extremely devoted to their role and wouldn't dare break character. 
and they all know how to adapt their characters to you and whoever is coming through the haunt. And so what I mean by that is this haunt has several interactive portions where the actors will literally play out a scene with you. And when they do this, it makes you a part of the experience. It allows you to sort of put yourself into the story with them. There was one actor, and I give immense props to, and it is the guy playing one of the first overlords that you encounter in the haunt. And he's like this tree creature thing. And you never see him. You just see this animatronic that he's moving. I talked about this. The head moved, the mouth moved, and he was interacting. And because you could never see him physically and what he was doing, the illusion was sold even more. And he sat there with me and cut up with me for like 10 minutes. Like, it was really, really fun. He was cutting up with me, cutting up with other people. And he just had a really great time. You could tell that he loved his job, that he was making the most out of it. And he had everybody laughing. I mean, I just sort of walked up and he's like, oh, you, you're by yourself? Oh, you think you're brave or something? And had the whole line that was standing there, like, just in hysterics from that one line. And then if you want to give some more credit... where credit is due there was another girl and i talked about this in the pacing she gives you the whole spiel the rules and whatnot and we had to hear her give it at least five or six times because of the way the line is set up and each time she gave that spiel she did it on the money every single time did not deviate from the script did not change anything like she had her lines down packed and her character never broke character. It was impressive because I don't think I could do that because I mean, when you give the same spiel over and over and over and over and over again, you know, it, it gets old and it does get slightly annoying to us standing in line because we have heard it a thousand times. And she even made sure to throw it. She's like, I know you've heard this already, but I'm going to tell you again. It's like, oh, okay. And like I said, if there was a way to throw that somewhere else to where it didn't take up so much time, I'd be all for that. But the impressive part was that she never broke character. She memorized that script, was all into that character all day long. And they weren't even the only ones either. Like, there were so many outside the haunt before you enter. And this isn't even a character There was a young woman taking photos of each group before they entered who she was awesome. And then she had sort of like another lady with her who was also giving you the spiel outside the haunt. And let me tell you, she had so much energy. This lady at the front door, she was awesome. And, you know, it was like they had their own sort of character without even having a character in the haunt itself. And that just made the experience even better. It it was an impressive experience, and it was so much more than I could have ever imagined. Come to me. Man, I saw the video. You were jumping in there. Video? Huh? <laughs> they chose me for what? So. Yeah? At 3.23 a.m., I'm coming to see you. At 3.33 a.m., you're going to hell. They've decided. <laughs> Don't be late. Hell made them in charge. Because I won't. I'll see you there. Okay, cool. Well, have a good night. Scary one tonight? Yeah, as I say, this has been the scariest one I've been through tonight. Alright. So, they. Number three? This is the third haunted house, yeah? So, let's review. For sets, we have five out of five screams. For costumes, makeup, and special effects, we have five out of five screams. For technical effects, we have five out of five screams. For scares, we have five out of five screams. For pacing, we have four out of five screams. And for actors and team, we have five out of five screams. Which brings us to an overall rating of, drumroll please. Five screams, ladies and gentlemen. That is a five screams haunted house. So Containment Haunted House was hands down one of our favorite haunts that we have attended so far. And especially on that day of October 1st where we toured the four different haunted houses in North Georgia, that was definitely our favorite one that we came away from. And 
we had a great time the whole time. We laughed, we cried, we screamed, we did it all. It was absolutely amazing, and this haunt impressed us from the minute we got there because we knew it was something different. We knew we were in for something unique, and it was something that we will never forget. Their unique setting, their Macabre sets, their awesome technical effects, and of course, their amazing cast and crew. They knocked the show out of the park to create a truly immersive and scary event for the Halloween season. So congratulations, Containment Haunted House, on receiving five screams. You truly earned your place up at the top with some of the greats, and we cannot wait to see what the future brings. We will definitely be returning to this haunt in the following haunt seasons, as well as Christmas time for their Christmas show. If you haven't already, be sure to go check out Containment Haunted House for yourself and let us know what you think. We guarantee that you will not be disappointed. Want to purchase your tickets for Containment? Keep listening to find out how. Hey there, Terror Talk fans. Are you looking for a new way to let your voice be heard? If so, check out our friends at Anchor. Anchor is a one-stop shop for creating your very own podcast. They offer editing tools to create your podcast, which include your audio, listener audio, unique transitions, and custom advertisements. In addition, they'll also help you distribute your podcast to other listener sources, such as Spotify, Apple Podcasts, and many others. With this unique app, you also have the chance to get paid for your podcast by simply placing ads for various sponsors in your videos. Best part of it all? It is 100% free. Anchor does all the work for you and makes podcasting as simple as turning on a light. Download the free Anchor app or go to anchor.fm to get started. That's A-N-C-H-O-R dot F-M. Whether you're new to podcasting, doing it as a hobby or hosting a professional show. Anchor is the place for you. And we are back, ladies and gentlemen, on episode 37 of The Terror Talks, where we were talking all about Containment Haunted House. Before the break, we gave you our rating for Containment Haunted House's 2021 haunt season, and they came out with a total of five out of five screams. So now we're going to give you information on how you can buy tickets today to visit Containment Haunted House. You can purchase tickets when you arrive at the facility, or you can purchase tickets online. Tickets and prices will vary on the day of each visit. Depending on the day of the visit, your ticket can be anywhere from $20 to $30. This ticket is a general admission ticket to Containment Haunted House. The price of the ticket will depend on the day of the show that you select to attend. These tickets are not timed entry. They will show a time of 8 p.m. to indicate it our opening time. You can arrive any time before we close and enter the attraction. For $40, you can purchase a Straight to the Fear Pass, which is a timed entry ticket. And this ticket allows you to enter the attraction through our Speed Pass line. It ensures that your wait time will not be more than 15 minutes. Every person in your group will need a speed pass ticket, limited quantities available for each time slot. So be sure to get your tickets today for Containment Haunted House. They are definitely worth checking out. We loved our trip there, and it was absolutely amazing. Containment Haunted House will be open on select evenings from September 24th through October 31st. Each night, the attraction will open at 8 p.m. and will close at various times depending on the night you attend. Please check Containment's calendar to see all dates and times. In addition, they will be having a special Christmas event on December 3rd, 4th, 10th, and 11th entitled A Haunted Christmas Carol. Be sure to check that out. Follow their social media for more information and to keep up with them. Their Facebook is Containment Haunted House or at Containment H-I-R-A-M. Their Instagram is at Containment underscore Haunted House. Their Twitter is at Containment G-A. And their website is www.containmenthauntedhouse.com. They are located at 1320 Blairs Bridge Road, Lithia Springs, Georgia, 30122. So be sure to go check out Containment Haunted House this Halloween season and let us know what you think. Let us know what your rating is. Maybe you don't agree with us, and if you don't, that's fine. Send in your thoughts to us, and you can play along at home and let us know what you thought of Containment. Maybe you hated it, maybe you love it. Either way, we'd love to hear from you. 
But that is going to do it for us today on episode 37 of the Terror Talks, where we are talking all about Containment Haunted House and their 2021 haunt review. If you enjoyed today's episode, be sure to rate, comment, and subscribe below. Let us know what you thought. Maybe you agree, maybe you don't. We'd love to hear from you. If you'd like to contact us directly, you can send us an email to theterratalks at gmail.com, or you can contact us on any of our social medias. We are on Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, and TikTok as well. Just look up The Terra Talks and you can find us, contact us, keep up with all of our social media posts. We love to hear from you guys and we love seeing you guys on the social medias. If you want to give us a little bit of extra support, you can check out our Patreon where you can subscribe to any one of our three packages and when you subscribe that gives us a little bit of cash to keep helping keep the doors open here at the Terra Talks and that'll allow us to do new things like update our equipment uh, do different things on the website the channels all that good stuff speaking of the website you can check out our website the link is in the description below you can listen to our podcast on all of our listening platforms we're on Spotify Apple Podcasts Google Podcasts Stitcher and a collection of other awesome listening applications so be sure to go check it out and finally we want to thank you guys so much for tuning in with us each and every single week it is you loyal fans and you loyal listeners that keep the channel going and keep us going so thank you so much for being a part of this we couldn't do it without you be sure to go check out containment haunted house before the haunt season is over and go check out some of the other haunts that we've attended this year we'd love for you guys to play along with us and let us know if you agree with some of our reviews or if you disagree you know everyone is entitled to their own opinion and we acknowledge that and are happy to state that and we are perfectly cool with that we love that so check them out let us know what you think we would absolutely love to hear from you but that is going to do it for us today here on episode 37 so until next time be safe out there don't text and drive and be excellent to each other we'll see you in the fog <laughs>